गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग ऑन रेलवे एंड एयरपोर्ट इंजीनियरिंग वेल वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट रेलवे इंजीनियरिंग एंड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट डिफरेंट गॉजिस वी यूज इन इंडिया वेल इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट रेल्स ओके वॉट इज रेल्स स्टील गर्डर्स विच आर कैरिंग द एक्सेल लोड्स that is uh, called as the rails well uh, rails movement is on the track okay they are made up of uh, high carbon steel to withstand the wearing and tearing from this wheels while talking about the functions of the rails is to provide a hard smooth and continuous level surface for the movement of the trains also to serve as a lateral guide to running wheels to transmit the moving loads to the sleepers and the material of the rails should be such that it gives minimum wear to avoid the replacement charges and failure of rail due to the wear so these are the main functions of the rails now uh, let's discuss about the requirements of an ideal rail well for the ideal rail construction or the provision the rail should be uh, of adequate lateral and vertical stiffness also uh, the shape of rail at bottom and head and the top of the foot should be such that the fish plate could be fixed easily while well, center of the rail section should be located very near the center of the height of the rail so that the maximum compressive and the tensile stress can be made equal depth of the rail head should be sufficient to allow the sufficient margin for the vertical wear the rail should be shaped suitably rail should be properly balanced uh, which means there should be a balanced uh, distribution of metal in the head in the web and in the foot of the rails while the surface and the gauge face of the rail should be hard and capable of resisting the wear while thickness of the web of the rail should be sufficient to withstand the load likely to come on the sleepers okay and uh, the width of the foot of the rail should be sufficient to spread the rolling stock on a large area of sleeper while well, the contact area between the rail and the wheel should be sufficient to minimize the contact stresses while well, all in all we can say the rail should have the most economical section which consists strength stiffness and the durability okay so these are the requirements for a particular ideal rail section well now if we talk about the different types of rails while the rails can be divided into three types double headed rails bull headed rails and the flat footed rails now we'll start discussing about uh, bull headed rails how it look like and what are its function well uh, this double headed rails indicate the early stage of development that means uh, earlier when the uh, railways started at that time the double headed rails are been established okay it essentially consists of three different parts the upper table the web and the lower table here in the figure you can see this is the upper table the straight line that is the web and this bottom is known as the lower table well both upper table and the lower table were identical 
and they were introduced with the hope of doubling the life of the race that means they are introduced uh, such as that this race can be used uh, twice as the upper section of the rail and the bottom section of the rail both are equal so once due to wear and tear if the upper surface is uh, you know worn out then we can place that surface at its bottom side and this bottom part will be worked as the upper table okay so when the upper table is worn out then the rails can be placed upside down and reversed on the chair and so the lower table can be brought into the use but unfortunately this idea soon turned out to be a wrong because the continuous contact of the lower table with the chair made the surface of lower table also rough and hence the smooth running of the train would be impossible so therefore this type of rail is then practically out of the use well uh, this double headed rails were made of rough iron with the length of uh, 6.10 to 7.32 meter so the single section of the double headed rails uh, was made of the length 6.10 meter to the 7.32 meter so this was all about the double headed rails well the second type of rail that is the bull headed rails these rails consist of head whip and foot and those are made up of steel here in the figure you can see this is this is the upper part which is known as the head which called also as a bull headed then this straight vertical path that is considered part that is considered as the wave and this bottom part is considered as the foot well the head is larger than the foot and the foot is designed only to properly hold the wooden keys with the rails are secured with the secured to the chairs well the two cast iron chairs are required for each sleeper when this sleepers are adopted well this bull headed rails are extensively used in england and some part of the euro length of this particular rail section is kept as 18.29 meter while well, talking about some merits and demerits of this bull headed rails they keep better alignment while well, talking about the merits keep better alignment and give a more solid and smoother track they have the heavy chairs and larger bearing plates on the sleepers give the longer life to the wooden sleepers also they impart the greater stability to the track and the rails are easily disconnected from the sleepers as they have no direct connection with the sleepers so these are some of the merits of bull headed rails and talking about the demerits they have less strength and stiffness they require additional cost of iron chairs and require heavy maintenance cost on also so this was about the bull headed rails now if we discuss about the flat footed rails this was originally thought that the flat footed rails could be fixed to the slippers directly and it would eliminate chairs and keys uh, requirement for as it required in bull headed rails and it was observed that the heavy train load caused the food of the rail to sink into the wooden sleepers which making the spikes work loose 
To remedy of this, a steel bearing plate came to use between the rail section and the sleeper at the rail joints and other important places so that it will bind the sleeper as well as the different plates properly while flat footed rails are most widely used in the railway tracks in almost all over the India well the benefit is that the base or we can say the foot of this rail are widened okay so once if you have a base a wide base okay so that will give you the proper stability and the strength also so now let's discuss about some of the merits and demerits of flat footed rails while talking about some of the advantages the foot of the rail can be directly spiked to the wooden sleeper or it can be fixed to the metal or the concrete sleeper with the keys. It has got a higher lateral and vertical strength. The maintenance is also easier. It permits easy inspection of the rail sleepers and other fastening. Now talking about disadvantage of the flat footed rail. Well the fittings get loosened more frequently with comparison to the bull headed rails. The impact of rolling wheels directly affect the fittings. The straightening of band rails and replacing the rails are very difficult in flat footed rails. So these are some of the disadvantage also for the flat footed rails. So these was all about three different types of rail sections that we used all over the world talking about the first one at the initial stage when the railway is established okay uh, double headed rails were used then after uh, British have modified the rail section and they have uh, established the the bull headed rails okay and then in India if we say in India we are using the flat footed rails wherein in the flat footed rails we have a widened foot and the smaller head so it will give you the proper stability okay well uh, talking about the standard section that we used in the India okay so what are the standard rail sections first of all as we are using uh, flat footed rails so, so our standard section would be flat footed rails well <laughs> these rail sections are are as per its weight okay and those are 52 kg and 60 kg of rail section okay talking about a uh, rail section of 52 kg well uh, indian railway in the year of 1959 have designed a rail section of 52 kg per meter and this is as per its weight for unit length okay now to meet the requirement of heavier and faster traffic at that moment of time this rail was recommended for the use on all the broad gauges and the main line routes with future speed up to 130 km per hour and also it contains or it allowed the traffic density about 20 to 25 gross million tons and its cross sectional area is uh, 6615 that is 6615 square millimeter okay here in this figure also 52 kg of the standard rail section is being uh, given and uh, its uh, dimensions are also mentioned in the figure while talking about the rail section of 60 kg this is a standard uh, rail section used in uh, many countries of the world also. The rail section has been designed for speed up to 16 km per hour and the traffic density about 60 gross million tons. So it has a uh, cross section but obviously larger than the rail section of the 52 kg and that is 7686 square millimeter. 
so this is about the rail section of 60 kg i hope student uh, you understand this topic uh, properly we are keeping till this particular point okay thank you so much all of you for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture